Hi, I'm Sana, and I love food. <laughs> I love it enough that I left engineering to become a chef. So I want to start by asking you a question. Have you ever thought who's in charge of your health? You? I hope so. Government? I hope not. The food companies? Definitely not. So, you. If you think about it, we are born with our own genetic that we can't change, at least not yet. We are, live in the same environment with the pollution that also we have no control of. So the only thing we have control of is food we put in our mouth. So I hope by the time I'm done that you will become what I call a conscious eater. You are conscious of what you put in your mouth. Because I believe, no matter, you know, you're an engineer, a doctor, anything, if you don't take care of this, this is not going to work. I, at least I know when I'm hungry, I'm very crabby. And I know it when my staff bring me an apple, they're telling me, you are crabby. <laughs> That's their gentle way of telling me that. So we really have to be conscious of what we, be eat, what we put in our mouth. And that's why I want to tell you about a wonderful ingredient that I'm very passionate about. Bulgur wheat. Most of you, you think you don't know what bulgur wheat is. But most of you, I think, had the bully. If you have the bully, you ate bulgur wheat. So what's bulgur wheat? Bulgur wheat is a wheat that's been bar-boiled and dried. And I have to tell you, whoever came up with this idea, my, our great, great, great ancestors in the Mediterranean did a favor to, the, to my family and to the humanities. So they, every village, before technology and anything, they blend their wheat, and then, you know, they cut it. And about October, the women of the village get together and they assign date. So let's say Monday will be Sana'a's day. So every village will have Huge pot, huge pot, and three hill large stones. And the men, they're more than happy to carry the pot the night before and the stones to the designated house. And the women, about four o'clock in the morning, they get up, all the women in the village get come together, and they go to Sana'a's home, and they fill up the water in the pot, and they put the wheat, and they boil it. Meantime, the men are sleeping. And the, men, the women don't mind because that's their time of visiting and, you know, gossiping and the whole thing because they have to wait for the whole pot to boil. After it boils, you know, while they're having their tea and everything, then they use a huge um, kind of spoon, as you see in this picture, to put, to put all the wheat, the one bar boiled wheat, in a basket that's hand waving and also it passed from generation to generation. And they put it on their shoulders, and they go, they take it to the, my roof, because it's, today is my turn to, burn, to boil the wheat. The roof has been already cleaned, and it's flat, and they have nice white sheet on it, and they put the wheat on that sheet. And they leave it there for about 10 days to dry in the Mediterranean sun. So in order to make sure it all dries, that's how they reward their kids. So we all kids, we used to wash our feet, and then we take turns to walk through all the wheat, and we make a design. And we show off, oh, I did, and it looks like almost like a Japanese rock garden. It's beautiful. But if you think about something, if you have wheat on the roof of the building, and you have birds, what happens? It's all gone. So, long time ago, I have, like I said, I, you know, you have to admire. I mean, now we have all this technology, we can come up with other things. But they, then, they thought of putting uh, shiny threads that loosely over the wheat. So, when the wind blow it, it keeps reflecting in the sun, so it keeps the birds away. Recently, I mean, my mom's time, they start taking from the kids the cassette tapes. Remember the old cassette tapes? So they pull it, and my mom, she used to make a point. Uh, you know, I always wanted to come to America, so I liked Elvis Presley. He was the first American 
singer I ever heard. So she'll make a point, go steal Elvis Presley's cassette because she hated him. <laughs> and she will take the thread and, and they put it over all the weeds. And of course, when I come to see it, and she's my mom, you know, she's paying for my food. I couldn't say anything, just go to my room like, I see something. So that's why I came to America, so I could listen to Elvis Presley. <laughs> anyway, after 10 days, the women come all again. And, you know, so my share, usually, like, you know, my mom, be about 200 kilos, so we're talking about 500 pounds, because they make enough for the whole year. So they take it down. I want to show you this picture first. And then, a long time ago, they used to put it in a big pot, and then they have two stones. And these stones, they have a hole in the, t in the top, and the women sit on the floor, and they put the bulgur inside it, the, the wheat inside it, and they grind it. So if they go five times, you have the fine bulgur wheat, the one we use in tabbouleh. If you do it only three times, you have the coarse wheat, that's the one we use for pilaf. And then they give it to the grandmothers. They get them nice baklava, you know, they promise them nice dress. And all the old ladies sit, and each one has a huge, like, almost like a wooden colander. And they go through it like this, and they, this way some of the stones, the, anything that the birds left on the, bir on the weed, it goes away. And then they put it on the roof again, and they dry it again for 10 days. By doing this process, you have an, a grain that literally it keeps for years. No insect, you can put anywhere, it doesn't need any temperature. Just it stays there and it tastes wonderful. Also, by doing that, you don't need to boil it so long. If you, anybody bought wheat for any recipe, you put the water and you wait. You put the water and you wait. It takes forever. And it just tastes like wheat. By bar boiling the wheat and sun dry it, you have something that it's actually it doesn't take a long time to cook. And it has a nice nutty flavor and nice textures. So what's so special about bulgur? Why I'm so passionate about it? I have to tell you, by the way, you know, I'm an engineer, you know, my parents sent me to America and the whole thing. My mom's freaking out that I'm talking about bulgur. <laughs> you know, she, she wanted me to talk about, the, uh, you know, brain surgery, some fuel engine, something. She said, bulgur, you're talking, I sent you to America to talk about bulgur. <laughs> but I, I am a big believer in good nutrition. So, uh, bulgur is one cup of bulgur. It gives you 50% of your daily requirement of fiber. Think about it, one cup. Also, it's high in fiber, which we thought about, sorry, high, high in protein, high in zinc, high in iron, vitamin E. And also, what's so unique about it, after you bar boiled it, it becomes low glycemic. What that mean? That means when you eat it, your blood sugar doesn't shoot high, which is make it excellent ingredient for anybody who's watching, watching their diet or have diabetes. Also, now, so I, now I talked to you about it. I hope I get you a little bit interested. Now I want to get you really interested. We have a joke when, we was, when I was studying nutrition in college that if you dig the grave of an American, after 200 years, you'll find him the same. Guess why? Preservative. Because everything we eat is, has preservative, additive, you know, all this stuff. And that's, again, I know I keep going again, conscious eating, conscious eating. So I went to market and I bought, like, the best uh, bread I can find. That's the best. And it's a huge ingredient list. But if you look at the second ingredient, they use burgol to enrich the best bread you have in the market. If you check on burgol, what's the ingredient? One, burgol. There is no additive, no preservative, no, color, no coloring, no chemicals that we can't pronounce, just burgol. So that's by itself, it's wonderful. Because the more we, the nutritious we eat, the less preservative we eat, the better favor we're doing for our body. Also burgol, like I said, they would boil 200 kilos. It has a long, long shelf life. When I used to come to America, when I was still a student and go back home summertime, my suitcase would be about 25 kilos of just burgol. <laughs> and the guy at the airport, you know, would look at it and said, what's this? 
And for me, it was like a shocker because who doesn't know Burgot? <laughs> and you know, I would keep it un in my suitcase under the bed because it was available. Anytime I want to eat something, I'll add just the sauce or even water, and I, I eat it. It's very inexpensive. One pound of bulgur wheat in the United States is dollar twenty-five cents. And believe me, you don't want to cook the whole one pound of bulgur. It expands. So I went to make this dish. I want because I have all the ingredients already at the restaurant, but I want to make a point. So to make this pilaf that feed at least four people, I went and I get them from the market. So the tomatoes, the garbanzo beans, the olive oil. Double gore, everything came to $6.53. That's less what you pay for a burger that can, I'm not going to name names, but uh, you know, some burgers can they literally take you right directly to your heart attack. <laughs> this one, with $6.53, you're getting your protein, your fiber, your iron, your zinc, your antioxidant, everything. It's delicious for $6.53. You can feed, so it's very good for your budget. That's another thing we have to think about, especially if we are in college. Bulgur wheat also doesn't need heat. So we all like pasta. You can cook pasta without heat. We all like um, oat. You can cook oat without heat. Bulgur, actually you do. That's what the bully is. The bully, you put the bulgur and you add the ingredient. By the time you finish, you have to bully. Uh, coarse coarse burgul. So I, all what I do, I add water. Go take a shower, come back, add all the ingredients, and you have this wonderful salad. We do it at the restaurant, we call it house salad, because I eat it every single day. <laughs> and another thing about bulgur is ideal leftover. It tastes much better the day after. So the, the longer you keep it, the better it tastes, because it keeps taking all the liquid. You know, anybody who made a salad and went on a picnic, you have to do it right away or eat it right away because it goes watery, watery, watery. Unless you have burgul in it, it keeps taking the water, the water, so the salad stays nice and intact for days. That's why tabbouleh stays for, it can stay a month in your, in your fridge, but I eat it all like, never start more than two days. But when I make a pilaf, especially if I use one pound, we have a lot of leftovers, and my husband, even though he likes burgul, he hates it when I make bulgur pilaf because I make it today. What we're having? Bulgur. Okay. So he, you know, we'll have nice salad next to it. Second day, what are we having? Burgul. <laughs> so, okay, so now I love burgul, but please can we move a little bit away? But it's wonderful for you if you, have, if you have a college or if you're on a budget because it tastes good day after day, day after day. If you think about it, you know, you go to Chinese restaurant, we always take it up over. The rice stayed dry. You know, you open the box, it's really dry. You can't eat it. If you have leftover pasta, it's mushy. You can't eat it. Bowler, you can keep eating it. But don't make one pound. Two, two cups maximum for four days. You don't want to do it. I don't want you to hate it. I want you to like it. <laughs> so now, I, you know, last thing I want to tell you, think, I, let ask you. You know, when you go to a gas station, have you ever thought of putting the wrong gas in your car? Oh, no, today I want to think to put uh, diesel in my engine. No, you do a research, what's the best oil, what's the best things for your car, and this is just a car, an engine that you can replace. So I want you to do the same effort when you put something in your mouth. After all, we can't replace this. At least I think I'm not replaceable. <laughs> Another thing is, you know, that's why sometimes people don't think of nutrition, because you don't see it on the spot. You know, we eat junk food, but after a while we have the heart attack. Um, good nutrition is like good investment. You do it slowly, continuously, and on the long run, it pays big. Same thing with nutrition. After all, it's not the, quant it's the, qu not the quantity, it's the quality. You want to be, at least I want to be, a nine years old person running a marathon. So that's what's important. That's why you see people are Mediterranean. You know, they're old age, they have beautiful skin, they're still playing backgammon, they're still walking, everything is nutrition that they ate every single day. So one thing, like again, I'm going to go mime and leave you with that thought. Bulgur is the food of the poor. 
So nobody think of, like, if you're a guest, to, you know, to cook burgal for you. It's rice with meat because, I mean, God forbid, you know, you're a guest. So when I tell my mom, she, you know, I call her and she, say, she said, you know, I told her I'm giving the speech about burgal. And I said, you know, I sell burgal. She said, you mean people come to your restaurant and pay money to eat burgal? I said, yes, and I charged $9 for it. She said, you know, and $9 multiplied for Syrian pounds is like we're paying 1,000. She said, they paying how much? I said, paying $9 to eat burgal. She said, American, you are crazy. I said, mom, American are not crazy. We're just, we know good food when we taste it. Thank you.